Hey, what's going on guys? Andy here with the Football Card Quest. We've got a package here from one of our patrons and we're doing a group bulk submission to CSG grading. And I'm gonna give you guys an overview of how I prep the cards for submission, how I pre-grade them, the factors that I look at to kind of help these guys get a 10 on their card. And then we're gonna actually walk through how to submit your cards to CSG from start to finish, including some really critical pro tips, some things that I learned the hard way through my first bulk submission. So let's dig in. The corners of the cards are each of the four corners of the card sharp and pointy with no whitening. Then you want to look at the edges and you want to look for the same type of thing. And this is where potential trimming uh, comes into play. Most of these cards aren't going to be trimmed, but some of the high ends 2021 contenders rookie ticket autos have been found to have been trimmed because of the paper stock they use. It's easy for that card to be uh, damage. It's easy for the corners to get whitened. It's easy for the edges to potentially get whitened as well. You want that color to be constant all the way to the edge and you want it to be seamless all the way down the side. Color all the way to the edge and razor sharp all the way down. So the same way you look at the corners, you want to look at the edges as well. Then from there you move into the card. I like to then look at the centering. This is a good card to take centering into account. You can see the off center from left to right. You see that little gap on the left and the right, the right side is bigger. What you can do, an easy thing you can do is go to eBay, pull up a PSA 10 or preferably pull up an SGC 10 or even a BGS 10, which are incredibly rare. But if you can find one, that is gonna be the highest quality condition of card. PSA has been a little bit more lenient on centering sometimes, so it's hard to trust their judgment on some of this stuff. But if you look at SGC or BGS 9.5 or SGC 10s, or maybe you can find a CSG 10s, they're starting to trickle into the marketplace. And this is the company that we're gonna be utilizing in this submission. Look at what the, uh, the centering of the 10 is. And there should be even centering between the middle frame, the design of the interior of the card should be equal distance from left to right, top to bottom, centering, and then surface issues. So of course, you know, surface is something very important. Like surface is, is what a lot of times will set apart a, uh, a nine from a 10 because there's little things like maybe print lines, maybe scratches, maybe dimples. Dimples are a big thing that we find in mosaics. So we're gonna look at mosaic right here off the bat. I can tell you this, um, this origins here from Derek has a little tiny white ding on this bottom left corner, which is easy, especially when you don't have a slit in these type of penny sleeves. You see how that kind of could potentially, if you're not extremely careful, could potentially catch in a penny sleeve because origins are a thick cardstock. Uh, this Trey Lance looks very, very clean. Whew, that's a nice card, man. Really nice Trey Lance origins here from Derek. And then we've got the Mosaic rookie, Zach Wilson. And this is an NFL debut, so it's a, a variation considered. One of the major release base cards from Mosaic, but Derek uh, obviously testing out some more base cards here, part of his submission. Nothing wrong with that. If he gets tens, it's definitely gonna increase the value significantly. But Mosaic is an important one to look at. I'm gonna kind of shine the light on it so you can see, you see those little dimples around his foot, around the, the print lines, because this is kind of like a, you know, this does have a, a texture to it. And you can also see there's a little, this is when you wanna have your microfiber cloth and it, it, not the microfiber cloth that you'd wash a car with, those ones that have those really like, I don't know, they just stick on everything. This is like one you would clean your eyeglasses with. All right, now real quick, if you really wanna get your card clean, shout out to Kurt's Card Care. Check out this guy's product because it is incredible at getting scratches, potential print lines and other blemishes off the card. It's, it's quite an incredible product. And shout out to JT Cards in our community for putting me onto this guy's product. Uh, go follow him on Instagram, check out his product. It is extremely legit. You can see uh, before and after results of what he's been able to get off of cards. Uh, and, and it's definitely helped people get tens in the past and it could potentially help you for the nominal price that his kit is selling for. And I have no affiliation with him. I just know from testimonials that this product is fantastic. You can see that that little 
that little impression right there next to the football is stuck there. That's gonna take away from the grade on this card. So I'm gonna go, you know, we're gonna start moving through these quick, uh, quicker, but I wanted you guys to understand the little tiny details of cards that matter when it comes to getting a 10, guys. All these things are gonna detract from a 10 grade, especially when we're talking about Good, like really good grading companies like CSG and SGC are known to be more strict than PSA so So today we're on the CSG website and we're submitting a bulk order of about a hundred cars to CSG for grading now a couple things that I want to uh, just talk to you guys about a quick walkthrough quick tutorial on how to submit your cars things you need to be aware of there is a lot of similarities to PSA you do have to create an account on CSG you also have to pay at least the $25 membership tier it's an annual membership to be able to submit to them for grading the only free uh, service that they have you can submit if it if you own a csg card and it has an error on it or if you want to submit it in to get that new label you've got a csg 9.5 with the green white you want the black and white you can do that for free as well but if you want to be able to submit cards to them you've got to sign up for one of those uh, membership packages quick pro tip if you're doing a bulk submission your order is already going to be well over hundred fifty dollars so you might as well sign up with the premium or the elite tier because you can see you get that hundred and fifty dollar credit with CSG they take that off of your order so you do need to have the card in a penny sleeve and in a semi rigid card holder just like PSA so you can get a card saver ones or the ultra pro semi rigids now we choose our, our tier and services. Now we have to commit a, a submission form and you click online form and it's gonna t take you directly to this screen where it's your cart. You start a new order, right? And so, so now we've got it to where it's sports cards. Then we're going to click mail in or, or show drop off, which is interesting, but we're gonna do grading, online waiver and consent to remove collectibles from holders yeah we're giving them consent uh, and we accept the risk we're going to purchase insurance with our shipment and but we do accept the risk of sending our cards to them and in the mail and everything so now we're now we're going to select bulk order select this service to receive premium high resolution images of the front and back of the cards shown encapsulated in the csg Holder. So this is interesting because SGC does this for free as included in their submission. So that's a little bit of a pro for SGC, a con for this. They want an extra $5 per card. We're not going to accept that. All right, so now we're in here and the declared value can be, if it's a very, think about this, they're, they're trying to determine what the approximate fair market value is for a card. Uh, most of the times they're going to use eBay comps. So if it's a common card that has a lot of transactions and you didn't purchase this card just very recently, then you definitely want to go on eBay, look at sold transactions to see what the card is currently selling for now. Um, otherwise, if it's a very rare card and you can't find comps, you can put in what you recently paid for it. Their maximum is $249. The only thing that they'll do is bump you up into the appropriate tier that allows for a higher declared value, similar to what PSA has done. Now, there's also an up, a $2 upcharge for autographs. So this is interesting because I kind of think you don't necessarily need this. Do you want the grade for the auto? That's a, that's a debatable topic. I mean, Panini guarantees the authenticity of the autograph on the card. So I don't think you necessarily need this. Unless, of course, the autograph is not guaranteed by Panini. You get it signed by the athlete at an event or a signing or a meetup or something like that. You definitely want to get that autograph authenticated from CSG. Have them grade it. Uh, this, the, the thick holder though, this one is going to be required for cards that are RPAs, have a thicker than average card. This one's interesting, this pedigree, add a pedigree to the certification label to indicate a card's past or present ownership. You can pedigree a card to yourself typically without providing any documentation okay so we're not gonna really do that as well I think that's for really high-end maybe really vintage stuff we're gonna avoid all of this stuff so basically have to go through each one 
we have to do this for each card as part of our submission. Right now I've got 79 cards. So yeah, I'm not gonna uh, have you guys sit here. <laughs> you guys don't wanna watch all that. We'll, we'll fast forward through that. Let me get through adding the rest of these cards and then we'll review it. One eternity later. All right, so we put every single card in individually to the CSG submission form, the online submission form, with a total of 78 cards. You can see where I put in the player name, the card description, and the declared value with the quantity. Uh, so you can go all the way down this list. Uh, we did not elect to have any autograph grades like we talked about. That would be a little bit of an upcharge, but I haven't seen that autograph grade provide significant increase in value when, when looking at SGC. We've got the total 981, we paid for it. Pro tip, something you absolutely need to be aware of. When you click pay on the CSG website, they're not gonna take the money out of your bank account until they receive it and they go through your order and they check your declared values in case there's any upcharges there for thick holders, uh, declared values over their threshold, et cetera, et cetera. So they don't actually take the money out of your bank account until potentially two to three weeks later. Something very very important to, to, to keep in mind when you're doing this. And they do not offer PayPal as a payment method. Um, now we've got to print out our packing slip. All right, so they want me to pack them in the list of the packing slip and I kept them in order as I submit them onto their submission form on SGC. So this would be the very last ones and the very bottom one here on the stack is gonna be the very first one. So you guys will get to see each card one more time as I go through them quickly here. So of course I misplaced my tape measure, but I found this little itty bitty baby one. It's pretty solid. This is why I use PirateShip.com. All right, so now you've seen the entire process. Now I put that in the mail on May 24th. They had marked it received by May 27th. And today we are sitting on June 13th. This was supposed to be a bulk submission that was supposed to take approximately 90 days to get back 40 business days. Today I'm sitting here working and stay tuned to find out. Oh, look at this, man. This is just so beautiful, with all these little slabs stacked up. <laughs> Stay tuned, let's go, let's dig in. 